All right, this is the uh, second time I'm doing this. It's more awkward and stuff like that keeps happening. And uh, D, FTL Nerd Talk, got a special guest, Jen, from uh, Comic Will Break Your Heart. Yes. How's it going, Jen? It's going so well. I'm so glad that I have the opportunity to, to like sit down and talk because I feel like we have messaged and kind of like circled around each other on Instagram yeah. and it's cool to finally um, sit down and actually talk in a digital face-to-face -face conversation. <laughs> hey, until cons come, this is what I got to deal with for now. So Ooh, yeah, and between you and me, I, I didn't visit many cons before this. So mm. I, you know, for a long time, I was a big convention goer. Um, I used to live in Florida and I really enjoyed Megacon. And then I lived in South Carolina for a little bit and went to Heroes Con. And Heroes Con is by far my favorite convention. And I um, recently moved out here to the Pacific Northwest and haven't had a chance to get to a convention since. Are you like born and raised in the South or? Born and raised, yeah. Flow grown, as the kids say. Dude, Georgia. Yeah, yeah. Atlanta, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. It's always cool to meet like a, a southerner who's also a nerd. Like that's you know, it's not mm -hmm. easy being a nerd in the south, man. No, not at all. I mean, for so many different reasons. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah. Um. Like, you know, I think that I was able to find my nerdiness as an adult more than more so when I was a kid like I had to keep it secret when I was a kid and now I'm an adult and I'm like okay I don't care who knows <laughs> I'm a nerd it's what it is yeah like you, yeah. you, you, you wear yours on like you know your arms and your leg I know you, you and Ophelia mm -hmm. are like this so yeah yeah <laughs> Ophelia your her squid her tattoo on her leg by the way if you guys yeah I don't know if I can Oh man! There it is. I was gonna lift it up a little bit, but this is turning to a different show. It is uh, only yeah. five minutes in. Right on. I, I was gonna say we can call this um, only octopus fans. <laughs> <laughs> You're hilarious. That's cool. Uh, so we read a couple of comic books this week. Uh, I read mm -hmm. Sacred Six, which I did not know was attached to the Vampirera. Vampirella series. Did you know yeah. that beforehand? Did not know at all. I knew that um, it was published by Dynamite, which also has the rights to right. things like uh, Vampirella and there's a Red couple Sonia. other titles. Red Sonia. And I think that Dynamite, you know, I typically don't read a lot of Dynamite. So I'm, I'm glad that you did mention this um, because it's done by Christopher Priest. And I, just a man, yeah. I think that um, he, so underrated as a writer. I think that he deserves a lot more respect than he gets. I mean, dude, um, he revolutionized so, Black Panther. Yeah. 100%. And especially um, with everything that he did with um, with DC and man. And Deathstroke. Yeah, Deathstroke mm -hmm. and, uh, and Justice League. Yeah. Yep. Did you read his Justice League run? Um, a very long, probably when I was back in high school. Yeah. Good God, yeah. dude. <laughs> Right on. Uh, and I think the artist is uh, Gabrielle Ibarra of mm -hmm. Sacred Six. What do you think of the story? Like, what, where did it take you after this first issue? Because that's all we read, just the first issue. You know, I wasn't really sure what, I had no clue what the plot was. I no. had basically seen what the covers were. And I think for me, when it comes to titles that are published by Dynamite, there's a lot of cover intrigue and most people buy it for the cover because it's like, ooh, I'm going to get a 90% cool naked lady on the front. <laughs> like, you know. Bandola that's Dynamite. <laughs> yeah, so that's definitely Dynamite's brand. And so I really didn't know what to expect with this, but I actually, I really enjoyed it. Um, in, in this first issue, we get to see a ton of different characters, a ton of different stories. And I feel like one thing that this does really well is that it didn't do the Suicide Squad thing where it just like throws a hundred characters at you yeah. and you're trying to put the pieces together. Um, you get to see several very fleshed out characters and I really enjoyed it. I was intrigued the entire time instead of confused. It like, left, I wanted it left to know you wanting more. Yeah, the jinx. Yeah. Yep, exactly. exactly. And it didn't, I didn't, I don't feel like it treated me like I was dumb. Like it didn't dumb things down for me, but it also um, 
it, it intrigued me and it left me wanting more not confused so. like even like like the, you got two kids telling a story like uh on their, their way walking home uh you got uh a vampire zombie cult doing some things in the background you have a uh, shady um hollywood executives doing some weird uh what, zealot type things going like it was like a lot of things going on like it made like one like what the hell is actually happening in this story but mm -hmm. again like that, that intriguing is like it, it got you wondering like what is going to be next yep exactly and because of the the different stories because you like you said like you see a story in georgia you see a story in egypt and they're all kind of coming together yeah um so it made me feel like um i mean a good first issue should leave me wanting more and should leave me being like i immediately need to pick up the next issue and that's what this one did so i'm really i'm glad that i'm glad that you mentioned reading this because i probably wouldn't have done that otherwise you know what uh if, if i didn't see priest's name on it like i honestly would not have even touched it if i didn't see priest's yeah. name on it like i saw like you know the women like i was already turned off like then i saw a black woman like you know what maybe i'll give it a shot they looked at the name like oh priest is attached to it like there we go like i'm in so yep and, sold <laughs> and it's covers like this that uh like really got me wondering like what the hell is going on in the story because this mm -hmm. we see this and when we see this character again he's like a farmer type guy and he's uh he's talking to his kids and then, like next thing you see is a zombie hanging from a tree like you don't know what his reasoning is for being in the story and like out of all the characters his like the most misplaced inside the story so mm -hmm. like it really goes back in like like i don't know what's going on it's not really offending me but like throwing this in my face like the suicide squad and LGUs, but uh, it really makes me want to see what else is happening. I feel like I should have read two or three more issues. Yeah. I like a better experience. Mm -hmm. Agree. Um, I'll probably, um, I think that I saw that this is a limited series, maybe of 12 or maybe. Mm, even better. Even better. I think that right now it's on issue six and I think it was a, maybe it was a six of nine or it's it's a limited series I believe so eight, eight um, issues eight eight okay I got I got a computer in front of me so yeah yeah eight, eight issues <laughs> but yeah like uh it looks good the covers are still very you know um sex positive if that's so, you know that's exactly it I think that they they know their Maybe it's like kind of like a bait and hook type thing where it's like, you know, we're going to give you a lot of, a lot of times what they'll do is they'll, they'll bait you with a sexy person on the cover yeah. and then they don't deliver or they, you know, don't give you much substance. Yep. This has so much more substance on the inside than it does on the outside. And, you know, I feel like, uh, I wouldn't say, I, I wouldn't like try to compare it to them, but Priest and Rucka kind of have like the the same kind of mindset when it comes like to having scantily clad women on their covers. And like, mm -hmm. I know priests from what I've seen of his work, like he doesn't usually have artists who draws characters like that. Uh, Rucka would go a little bit further, like, and just like wouldn't work with those people in the first place. That's who saw with a Frank Chow type situation. Mm -hmm. But uh, like, it's, it's, it's cool to see priests doing like a cover like this and have like varying covers on his titles when you normally don't see that kind of work. And he's writing, the voices of these characters that are just so different from the other. And if I want to compare again, like uh, a lot of writers with big, powerful names aren't the best at writing multiple voices. Like um, yeah. Bendis, for instance. I love Bendis. Don't get me wrong. Like I mm -hmm. like his work. But when it comes to writing multiple characters, the voices kind of like start sounding the same for all those characters. Like, and there's like no individuality. When it comes to this story here, uh, you don't have that problem at mm -hmm. all like the the dialogues the colloquialisms the the isms when it comes like to a situation with the character like they're all very different very foreign very like a uh, very american some rules some like a uh, hierarchy it's it's just all over the place and i'm really digging it yeah and that was one of the first things that i noticed in in this first issue because you get to see a lot of um like i just imagine um like stranger things like kids on bikes and they're you know telling almost like urban legends and myths yeah. and so it goes into them talking about these stories that they've heard and it transitions their stories and they're telling um other stories from other centuries and characters and things like that but they're using modern 
modern vernacular and it was really cool to see that and like you said the different characters having different voices instead of just one singular uh, yeah. yeah that and kept then, it really like, that kept the camera going. turn yeah yeah that was like the best like like it, i'm getting chills right now just thinking about it it's just that's how good it was mm. i feel like i hope i'm not hyping this mm. up too much because this next one uh tartarus tartarus um, um. If you want me to start Tartarus, I know like this is your book, but you read the entire thing. Like, uh, where do you want to start with Tartarus? Um, you know, um, I would actually, because we were just talking about this before we started, but um, I had been picking this up single issue by single issue, and it had started right before the like lockdown quarantine happened. Okay. Um, and I feel like that um, because the way that it got published and because of the um, there was that gap whenever comic book stores weren't open. And right, Diamond like in the really middle of May. Right. Yeah. Um, so I feel like this this title didn't get the recognition that it deserved, but I was still loyally picking it up when I could. Um, so I was reading it issue by issue, and then the co um, collected volume came out about a month ago, I believe, maybe a little bit more than that. And right now, I think issue number seven just came out this week. You're a big so, uh, Johnny Christmas fan. Just uh, this is written by Johnny uh, Christmas and uh, Jack T. Cole, by the way. Jack T. Cole, yeah. Um, I would probably say that I'm more than anything. I'm a really big fan of um, anything Image does, and if really? there's anything, oh, really? I, I would say maybe like maybe not like everything, but at least ninety percent. I will read almost every single Image first issue that comes out I will be picking it up and because I love to spend what I call the dumb bitch money I will buy titles that sometimes I don't love um, and read them much to my like mental detriment I, I love this one I could never use that phrase but I, I hear what you're saying absolutely like, <laughs> that, that phrase can never come out of my mouth but I hear exactly what you're saying <laughs> got it so anyways I um, I did really, really enjoy this. I'm a really big fan of big sci-fi ideas. And I would say if someone likes Star Wars, if they like Fifth Element, if they like Dune, I will talk about Dune every chance I get. <laughs> so I, have if a, you I like, had a note on my table. So like, do not talk about Dune with Jennifer. I had a, that note sitting right next to me. You I'm had joking. that I'm note. Kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I was like, I'm, I'm talking about it. Um, <laughs> so anyways, I think that if you, if you like stories like that, then you're going to like this. However, um, as big as those stories are, I think sometimes they get so big, they get convoluted maybe. Yeah. And I can see that happening. I don't think that this story is going to be for everybody, but I think if you can buckle down and really get into it, it's, I think that it's beautiful. Uh, I I think it's gorgeous too, and the art and the colors to it are just so vibrant and rich mm -hmm. that uh, mm -hmm. you do kind of get like submerged inside of it. The dialogue, the dialogue is straight, but uh, I've, the the art and the dialogue conflicts with me at times because the mm -hmm. art, it it really is. If I can show this like to those who are watching like the video version of yeah. this, uh, it's very vibrant. It's very luminescent. It has like so much detail to it and passion inside of it that when you're reading the words, like you got to go back and forth. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Like it, it takes you back and forth, like from like watching the art. It's like watching a subtitle film. If I if I can go that yeah. far, like uh, you're you're watching what they're saying, but like you you got to look down to read, but you got to look back up to see what they're saying. Like if it, if the expression matching with what they're saying. And like mm -hmm. uh, I read uh, Philadelphia last week with uh, with Victoria, mm -hmm. and honestly, like that's how I felt with that too. Like you know, I gotta keep looking mm -hmm. down to see like if the expression matches what they're saying because the dialogue is just is rich. Mm -hmm. And especially, you know, you mentioned Philadelphia, the artwork behind it, Jason Sean Alexander's yeah. artwork is just so it's detailed and it's rich and it's dirty and it's grungy. And you could, you know, that as you're reading it, that you need to look inside these details with the artwork. So you catch everything, even Great. though it may not be important to the story, you've got to like immerse yourself in it. Um, but I think that Philadelphia is one of the, it's on my top like horror list. Um, absolutely love. It's a must read. It really, I, I've only yeah. read the first issue so far. I got like, got so many other stuff to reading like, on top of this and three kids. Mm -hmm. So it takes me a while to get to yeah. all this stuff, but, uh, 
like this is this is the story Philadelphia like something I want to keep inside my back pocket but this one here uh Tartarus it's uh it starts out it starts out swinging like literally <laughs> like slugging you in the face with this character Sucra good god <laughs> dude she's a badass she is and she <laughs> I love that like you said like just comes out swinging because she comes out and everyone is like who is she she's this like monster of right. a woman and she's you know don't like, even look at her her she's name gonna murder carries you. power exactly yes um so I really love big titles like that and like I said these big ideas because it's not just about her it's about this planet Tartarus and um so this one was really fun. Um, I highly recommend it, but I can understand how it may it may be too much for people to go it in and be. just consume. Because you got you have to get invested in this story because it has like a rich world building inside. We talked about this uh, a few days ago about how mm -hmm. you see the planet and like the planet is just uh, has a world map attached to it. And, like that there may be some parts we'll never see in the mm -hmm. story. You read the entire thing, so like, like that may not be the case, but. It you you have this planet. This planet has like sub functions to it, but it also has like a, a hierarchy. It also has like 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 a lot of classism inside of it too. Mm -hmm. And you also have like a like a time jump as well in this first yeah. issue, and mm -hmm. it works to be honest with you because like one of the characters I'm like this is a spoiler. This is all spoiler territory. And yeah. uh, Sucra Sucra is killed by one of like the first command the warden of the prison that she was attached to. They both die mm -hmm. in the first issue. It was, to me personally, it was anticlimactic to death. I felt like the, the I feel like T. Cole may have, may have could do like a little bit more with that death. That's me talking. But uh, mm -hmm. what happens after that death? Like you see what happens to uh, Sucra's child because she has a kid while she's in prison, and like she when she gets out of prison, she wants to see her child. It's not really an emotional type situation with her getting her kid, but like what you see after that with her kid and like the ramifications of that kid. It uh, it it goes back to swinging again. <laughs> For sure, and the rest, you know, kind of spoilerly. I won't go too far into it, but the throughout the rest of the book, you you do end up learning more, not just about um, Tilda, um, her daughter, but you end up learning more about the politics and religious interplay, um, a lot of those things, oh, and oh um, it it's really fun. I would also say, and I, I don't feel like I caught this until this, um, this would technically be my third read of this. Um, <laughs> it reminds me of Saga in a way. I would say if you took Bitch Shrimp Planet too. and Bitch Planet, yeah. yeah. So I think if you like Bitch Planet, if you like Saga and maybe you want to read a story while you're on Mushrooms, <laughs> go ahead and- <laughs> Maybe, you um, know, <laughs> it may yeah. take you a couple, couple, a couple of minutes, maybe an hour or so to get through it, but yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Uh, I think that you would definitely get immersed in this and enjoy it. And like the, the really cool part about T. Cole's work is uh, the details, like the details. Mm -hmm. uh, Tartarus is um, the underworld inside of Greek mythology. And he puts a lot of like, like a uh, Pation type imagery inside of his work. Like uh, the, the bows of the ship, the, the way yes. like, like the the way like like Tartarus looks on the surface, like with the statues and, you, and the monuments, and like uh, the way things like are kind of like aqueducts every everywhere, uh, every all like the the ceilings are super high and like and massive, all like the the imagery that he puts inside of this, even like with the color and like the steampunky ish technology inside of it, it's mm -hmm. all just bombastic. Like, for lack of a better word, like, yeah. Oh, bombastic is the word. Bombastic <laughs> is now the word. I'm just, I think that, like, there should be just a review here. Bombastic, bombastic. <laughs> by D. D says this is bombastic. I'll take it. <laughs> it's crazy. Like, it's such a good story. And the colors, like you mm -hmm. said, mushrooms, man. Like, you will yeah. have a nice, cool journey with this. And, like, and the voices are so, they're so genuine. Like, mm -hmm. uh, you you may get offended by some of the things that people are saying, but like it's a uh, it's like a passing offense. Like uh, I think one of the characters called called uh, is it Tilda? Where Tilda, like, yeah. One of the mm -hmm. characters called Tilda's mom uh, a moron. 
And like you, you see like uh, the shock in her face, even though like it's a still image, you see the shock in her face of how she's taken aback by that. And like she again like goes to confront that situation, and like it's kind of like just blown off, like it was like never actually said. And like mm-hmm. those subtle quirks with people, it's the type of stuff I love reading about. And like and reading that kind of stuff, like when you're, you know, under the influence, is even more interesting to have. I'm just, I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> oh, for sure. Uh, the colors, like the the colors, the characters, any character or color really stand out to you? One of the, I mean, I obviously really like Tilda. I think that she is just a really fun character. Um, obviously, she's ends up kind of being the main character throughout the book, but I really, I love her attitude. There yeah. was a book recently um, by Vault Comics called Vagrant Queen that was a short-lived sci-fi series. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed that one, and I got a lot of vibes from the same character. Um, I could easily see Tilda being, pl- and maybe she wouldn't do it because she's playing, Zen- um, Zendaya is playing a character in Dune, so I don't think that she would do something this sci-fi, but I could easily see Zendaya playing a character um, like Tilda this, yeah. in this. Mm-hmm. Uh, very, very vagrant Green, I know what you're talking about. I thought that, yep. I always felt like, like the creators of Far Sector took some imagery from this character and put that into their... Oh, yeah. 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 I definitely see that. Yeah. Um, and Cage Jemison and Jamal Campbell. Yeah. Right. The do far sector. Mm-hmm. Like I, I can, I can see this. Like uh, I've seen this in passing. I never actually read it. Uh, was it to your liking? Did you care for Vagrant Queen? I loved Vagrant Queen. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Um, I feel like I describe. Okay. It's so many, five issues. I am not. I am not a huge fan of Star Wars. So don't hate me. Don't come at me. I'm more of a Star Trek girl, but you're my, um, you're I, my kind of dude. Right on. Okay, thank you. Um, so I feel like Vagrant Queen would be if I liked Star Wars. Okay. If Star Wars was was better, I guess. I don't know. I just related to this character a little bit more. I think it's hard for me to relate to a lot of characters in Star Wars, but. Star Wars is a world that doesn't have the Enterprise. That's what Star Wars is. So, yeah. Yeah. When you really like cut it down to it, it's a world without the Enterprise. That's what Star Wars is. And the Enterprise is all. Yeah. So, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So. If you ever want to talk about Star Trek, I mean, Dude, that's what I'm here to talk if, about. If you like, ever I could... follow my Twitter, that's, that's, that's my main thing. Okay. Wonderful. I think you just posted that you got, was it 4,000 followers on Twitter? Yeah. That's insane. That's amazing. I'm excited. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I could talk about Deep Space Nine like all day. Cisco is the fucking man, isn't he? Let's let's do it. So I'm in. Like I think we're done with the comics. So yeah, I'm in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Cisco. There was there was one episode that that, that gets to me, and like, I appreciate you know what episode. Is. Everyone talks about this episode. It's when he was uh, grabbed by the prophets and tossed in time. Mm-hmm. Kind of, like, kind of like a time displacement kind of thing, but like he had to like see who he really was through the eyes of, of bigotry and oppression and get like a reminder course about that from the prophets. That episode has so many damn layers to it that like it still resonates with me today. Whenever I hear people talk about how they're, um, that Star Trek is too political now and that they're, you know, doing the social justice warrior thing with Discovery, I'm like, First That's of all, fuck it. you. <laughs> yeah, it's been there since the beginning, my people. Um, but seriously, I think Deep Space Nine really was able to because of the, um, not only do we get to see people like the Bajorans, yeah. um, but we do get to see people like Cisco who um, can tell that story of what it's like with, um, even in a world where, um, you know, it's idealistic and it's utopian. You do get to see what it's like in the American South, specifically with like Louisiana and like right. you know where he grew up. And um, like that's the only time, from. if you watch Star Trek, that's the only time you really get to see what Earth is like. Like, mm-hmm. period. Like you don't really get to see like like oh hey mm-hmm. this is a day in life in Earth. Like that's that's the mm-hmm. only time you ever get to see what Earth is like when like inside that century. And uh, yeah, good job. Like it's it's a utopia. Hmm. And I loved it. Like a, 
and like the fact that we got to see it through Cisco's eyes, and I don't know how you see Cisco. I feel like he's a he's a man conflicted with his fate, considering that his wife passed, and uh, he had like that long hatred for Picard. But it was mm-hmm. some would say it was misplaced anger, but Picard never apologized for what the fuck happened. No, oh. um, and he he basically had to pick up the pieces. Yeah. Um, and I mean, he's space Jesus. Come on. Which one? Cisco or Picard? Cisco. Okay. Cisco. I mean, yeah, that's, you know, that's what the prophet made space him. space God. Yeah. <laughs> that was the last episode, spoilers. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it's whatever. I love that last episode. I, uh, I cried like a baby on that last episode. Yeah. And the fact that he was having a baby at the same time. Oh, God. Was... Have you, there's a documentary called, well, one, there's a documentary called What We Left Behind. Okay. Okay, I'm not going to say anything, but watch What We Left Behind and you will cry. Yeah? Yeah, 100,000%. What we, I believe it's called What We Left Behind. Yeah. I, I'm watching Voyager right now also. Okay. Um, How? Um, I'm on season five currently. Okay. Um, I'm not as familiar with um, Voyager, oh, but... Dude, you got to um, watch Voyager. Did you pick this up last week? You know, I've, I've um, been seeing that around. Like, they, they just brought it back, and I saw, like, you know, two, two or three years ago, those two had, like, a reunion, and they were talking mm-hmm. to each other. Uh, and I, I just heard that, um, um, well, the, the person, I can't think of her name right now, uh, Janeway character, mm-hmm. actor, uh, Seymour. A Mulgrew? Yeah. Uh, she was, well, she it, was yeah. I think it's Seymour, right? Who? Uh, the, the, the actor who plays uh, Janeway? Janeway, um, isn't it Mulgrew? Is it Kate Mulgrew or Melissa Mulgrew or something like that? Oh, I can't remember, but I, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, she was having a conversation about one of the episodes of of uh, Vorger. Yeah, Mulgrew. You're right. That's my mistake. My apologies. Yeah, okay. it's Mulgrew. Thank you. How um, is the best of us? Um. She was talking with AOC about one of the episodes of Vorger. I'm not sure how familiar you are with Vorger. Was this a Twitter exchange? It was. It was a Tuvix episode. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, it was an episode where two characters on Vorger, uh, Neelix and Tuvok, were merged Mm -hmm. together and became one being. And uh, they found a way. They spent like at least two or three months with those two characters being merged on that ship. Then they found a way to separate them. And they found a way to separate them. The character did not want to be separated. And, you know, Janeway had made, like, you know, the, the tough call to separate them. And um, when I watched that, I was like, this is wrong. <laughs> like, no. You, <laughs> like, for all intents and purposes, those two characters are dead now. Like, you can't just bring them back like that. Yeah. Ugh. Oh. Like, the character wanted to live. It was just, it was all very unsettling. Yeah, all of it. Are you watching Discovery? I have not touched an episode of Discovery. I haven't watched. I watched the first episode of Picard, but um, mm-hmm. it, it's not for not wanting to watch it. It's because I'm trying to, I'm trying to finish Voyager, then rewatch Enterprise because I never finished it, and then I want to go to Discovery and Picard. Yeah. I'm, okay. I'm, I, circles. I'm there with you. Where I watched maybe like two episodes of Picard and didn't love it, but I. I don't have very many shows that I watch every week. Discovery is one of those shows that I watch every single week. I love it so much. So, so much. From what I've seen, it changes every season too, right? Kind of. Um, right now in season three, it's gone, um, kind of spoiler alert, gone into in the, the future. future. Right? Yeah. Um, but the first, specifically the first two seasons go into a lot of Klingon, um, like territory, um, which I really enjoy. And... Um, man, I don't want to give any spoilers away. It, you learned it had to be pre genetically modified Klingons, too, right? Mm-hmm. Ooh. Yeah, so like you with, the, with that, the weird mustaches, yeah. You learn that Klingons have two penises because they have two of everything, like yeah. Nightcrawler. Yep. No way, that's crazy. I didn't know that. I mean, it's it's kind of like a nod to it because at one point, like, there's a Klingon who's like peeing, and you see, so, anyways, yeah, Klingons have two penises canonically. Okay. <laughs> you put some thought. Spoiler in. alert! You put some thought yeah. into this, definitely. I really love Klingons a lot. If you couldn't tell, 
Yeah. Um, when Dax died, that really got to me. Oh. Yeah. Like and I, if you watch, if you watch the documentary, um, what we left behind, it goes into why they um, killed off Jadzia Dax, and it breaks my heart. Um, you gotta, the reason I, why it happened. I, my 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 co-host of the show, Shaza, told me that because like she wanted the actor who played Dax wanted to go back to soaps. I'm not sure like mm. if that is that entirely it. From what I understand, she wanted she wanted to be paid, and she she wanted to get paid more, and she wanted to get paid what she deserved, and I think she also wanted better treatment. She doesn't specifically explicitly say that she wanted better pay and better treatment, but I think that maybe she clashed heads with some other people on set. That sucks. Um, so yeah, um, and I think. Whew, if you if you like Deep Space Nine and man, I feel like you'd really love that um, to watch that documentary. Well, it's, it's on Tubi apparently, so I'll see what I can I'll see what I can do. Okay. Uh, but I think that's it. This has been fun. Ooh. I know this devolved into the like let's randomly talk about Star Trek, but like seriously, there's three things you can't mention to me without a huge conversation. That's comics, that's Dune, and that's Star Trek. I thought you were going to say Neil Gaiman, but all right. Sounds good. Oh, well, yeah. He's, that's oh. within comics. That's within okay. comics. So. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, this has been fantastic. Um, if, if, I'm not sure how much uh, FTO you listen to, but it's usually always an episode that I talk about Star Trek. So I've gotten more and more obsessed as I got older. Like I watched the original. Mm -hmm. That was my jam. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is, this is nothing compared to the new stuff. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, where, can people, where can people find your page? Um, so I feel like there's a lot of people who follow me on Instagram. That's obviously pretty easily accessible. Um, <clears throat> so that is going to be comic books will break your heart. However, on YouTube, I'm comics will break your heart. Um, I also have a Patreon um, comics will break your heart on Twitter because I was initially doing things under Gin and Comics. Um, under there, you can find me as Gin and Comics Show. Um, but I, I'm not really on Twitter. Twitter's um, a little bit too much for me. Um, pretty overwhelming. It is. I won't lie to you. Like, there's a lot of reading that takes place in that. Yeah. I just followed you on, on YouTube. Oh, yay. So Thank you. We, we are now YouTube friends. You got a lot of, you got a lot of uh, material here. My goodness. I wish that I had more. Um, I've been doing like YouTube stuff since May. So I feel like I should have more content by now, but I don't. Um, but I have a couple things that I'm working on. I'm trying to do more like weekly chats. Um, so those are where you can find like just me. Um, I do go weekly live with my co-host Dan on Comic Chop News. We talk about comics every single week. We'll be there tomorrow on Friday. And then I have a new show coming up with a couple other comic book friends. So if you find me on Instagram, I usually post updates on, on Instagram. Busy, busy. Good God. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let me ask you a question. Like, uh, I'm not yeah. sure how, how this is going to come off, but have you heard of the, the personality comic book girl 19? Have you ever heard of her before? Yes. Okay. Um, it's funny because I, I feel like because I have, colored hair a shaved head um and i talk about comic books exactly why, why i feel like i don't know how you're gonna take this yeah but i just i thought i had to bring it up to you you know i feel like i do take it as a compliment because i think that what um and comic book girl 19 um goes by they them so or at least they were um one of the last times that i saw them that is, um, is me i i apologize for my mispronouns oh um that's awesome um, that you recognize that because pronouns are so important. Yes, and I know I, I, I fuck them up all the time. So I'll be the first to admit that. So I love what Comic Book Girl 19 does. But I do have a lot of very differing opinions from them. So they're, they're, <laughs> they're they, they, they are so, a bit yeah. extreme at times yes 100 yeah. percent from and i stopped following them a long time ago um whenever comic book girl 19 was doing things on youtube there was just a lot of things that i'm like i don't appreciate that i feel like there's a lot more hate anyways i don't want to trash talk someone but um i think that now that they go and do a lot more things on twitch they're 
their content has changed a little bit. That's what yeah. I've been told, but um, I, I'm not really on the Twitch platform that much, so it's hard for me to watch. But I do really it, yeah. appreciate what, um, what they did, and um, I would take any um, comparison to them as a compliment because I do think that they kind of built a brand and an empire that's really, really cool. That's right on. That's good to hear. I wasn't trying to compare. I just, I was just like hearing oh, yeah. you talk, seeing your aesthetics. I was just wondering if, like, if you even like heard a name or just like all, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Yeah, I've been compared to them a lot, so I get it. But um, you know, there can be more than one. Yes. <laughs> tattooed, shaved head, colored hair, comic book person. Gotcha. Duly noted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, check out Jen, check out her work, check out her millions and billions of shows. I said millions and billions. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to use that for myself, take it from that, that other guy. And uh, I hope you guys have a good one. Check out these books, Tartarus and Sacred Six. Uh, I'm excited to see what else happens in these stories. There's a panther inside of it, too, for some reason. Who knows why? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But uh, check, check it out. Have fun. Jen, thanks for being on the show. Thank you. Take it easy.